Talking about drugs. Talking about drugs. Lord help me with this one. Welcome back to another episode of Coffee and Coaching. This is William from fitnessforbackpain.com. If this is your first time here, welcome. If this is your third, fourth, fifth, 11th time here, thank you so much for your support. If you're new here though, make sure you hit subscribe. If you want more in-depth coaching and ways you can go even deeper into navigating your lower back pain with exercise, head on over to the website fitnessforbackpain.com Tons of free content, 100% free. Go over there, check it out. If you wanna check out my fundamental course that I actually give away for free, let me know what email you want me to send it to you and I'll send it to you right away. You'll find that link below here in the comment section or again, over at the website. So today's question comes in light of a lot of the opiate crisis that we're kind of going through right now. I'm not sure if you are new or if you have not heard about this yet. Long story short, lots of doctors, nurse practitioners, physician assistants, all those who are able to prescribe medication got busted. Now I'm not here to talk about opiates. I'm not here to talk about what's the best medication for back pain. What I am here to talk about is whether or not medication is good for lower back pain. Now, you're gonna have to take this with a grain of salt. Everybody is in a different boat than everyone else. So, when it comes to medication, I'm gonna kinda touch on a few topics. Again, I'm not a professional, I'm not a doctor. Do not take my advice when it comes to what you should or should not take as gospel. You always wanna meet with your physician, make sure that what you're taking or what you're not taking is the best for you. Now what I am going to talk about today is whether or not you should be taking some kind of medication as you navigate your lower back pain using exercise. And my main area of focus is really going to be on the Tylenol areas, the ibuprofen areas. Most of the over-the-counter medication you can take or get from any kind of CVS, Walgreens or, or kind of like your neighborhood drugstore. Now, I have an opinion on the medication spectrum when it comes to trying to figure out what you should do. There was a time where I was anti everything. I said, you know what? Don't take anything. Go as raw as you can, feel the pain, navigate the pain so you have a better understanding of what could be causing it and whether or not what you are doing inside the gym or in your home, whatever you're doing for exercise is actually working. So fast forward a couple years, a little bit more mature, a little more, uh, I guess, years under my belt when it comes to just utilizing different tools to get to a certain point. Now, if you're at a point now where you're taking lots of prescribed medicine, so your doctor is just giving you lots of medication, you have to navigate that very carefully. Obviously, you've got addiction. Obviously, you've got just overdosing. You've got issues with just taking something that is now a crutch versus what is a post-surgery or a season of your life where you're trying to navigate and keep your mind clear and take the edge off of the pain that you're experiencing. But the problem that I see the most is a lot of people get into the habit of buying the big Costco or Sam's Club size Tylenol extra strength and popping them every four to six hours on the regular. A perfect example of this is someone that I used to work with. They, he, he's a smoker, I'm not sure that had anything to do with what he was experiencing, but he would have chronic migraines every single day and he had a massive jar of Tylenol extra strength on his desk that he would pop at pretty much the same time every single day. Now, the problem with this is you become reliant. It becomes a habit, just like drinking coffee every day by 8 a.m. and then drinking another cup of coffee every day at 3 p.m. That becomes a habit. Whether your body feels like it needs it or not, it's a habit. And the problem with good habits and bad habits is if when you're trying to navigate a natural journey through low back pain, post-surgery, using exercise, and just daily activity is you can't afford for something to be slowing you down or masking the results or the symptoms that you're trying to learn from. Now I'm a big proponent of learning what your body is feeling. If you are in pain, if you're going through a season of life where you're just super stressed out 
and your back pain is elevated. Well, it's not the best thing to do necessarily is takes a bunch of stuff that's going to mask it. Because what it's gonna do is it's gonna think that everything is okay. The way you're moving, your lifestyle habits, the lack of sleep, your stress management techniques, you're gonna think that everything is all good and you're not gonna worry about it. So you're not gonna address it until the point where you are so sensitive that now you're at forced to have surgery because nothing else seems to be working. I'm all for taking things like Tylenol, taking things like extra strength or ibuprofen or some kind of anti-inflammatory but it all depends on the specific case. Now, the big thing that I like to, to talk about and always bring back up in every conversation I have is a mind-body connection. It's something that we're always battling every single day that we wake up when it comes to low back pain, when it comes to learning how to navigate it, is how our mind is connecting with the world around us, how it's connecting with the stress that we deal with. All those things matter when it comes to uh, trying to figure out what's just gonna be the best thing for you and your back pain. So there's two different roads you can go down. You can go down the road where you become habitual with taking your, your NSAIDs or your anti-inflammatories or your Tylenol extra strength. You have the addiction side where it just becomes a habit and you do it just because. And you think that if you don't do it, the pain's gonna come back and you'll never be able to go without the medication due to the symptoms showing back up. Then the other route is taking them to give yourself some rest. A lot of times is when you ha are going through a tough season, you kind of have some kind of grip on your navigating your movement habits, you're navigating whether you should or should not continue to go see your chiropractor as often as you're seeing, or you're stopping stretching, you're stopping all the, the deep tissue work that you thought was actually helping. So now you're trying to cut back, you're trying to navigate, and you have a bad day. That's one of the best times to take some kind of Tylenol or anti-inflammatory. But the way I look at it is a little bit different than most. What I'm aiming for when it comes to working with a student or myself in the past is I'm looking for rest. I'm looking for a break from the monotonous every single day, wake up, I have pain in my back, go to sleep, I have pain in my back. I'm trying to give my brain some time to just say, Hi, I'm, hey, right now nothing is hurting. That's great, all is well. I don't have to do anything, I don't have to stretch anything or strengthen anything or do any kind of weird mobility exercises. I can just rest in the fact that my body feels good. That is a great place for your brain to be, especially for the chronic pain sufferer. Where that goes south is when you become so reliant on taking that medication to achieve that rest that you're looking for when it comes to the symptoms that you may be experiencing. So the best thing I think, in my opinion, again, this is always my opinion, for anybody dealing with lower back pain in a sense of where the symptoms are your basic symptoms. You've got chronic pain, you've got chronic stiffness, you've got achiness, nothing crazy. If you've got a loss of bowel control, you've got dizziness, you've got loss of feelings from the hip down, these are major situations and you gotta go see a doctor for these things. Don't go to YouTube, don't go to Google. Make sure you check out a doctor. But for the basic symptoms that most low back pain sufferers deal with, I encourage a balanced diet of healthy movement, a healthy practice of, of establishing a sound mind, as well as getting out there and being active. Now, during all that stuff, as things unravel, as your body learns what you're doing, as you become more confident, I do believe that over-the-counter medication can be a huge tool. Now, the other problem when it comes to over-the-counter or prescribed medication is we tend to think about how our body should never experience pain. We, we believe that, okay, if I'm feeling pain, then I gotta take something to take this pain away. Well, oftentimes that's a wrong way of thinking because your body is designed to experience pain. Pain is an okay thing, it's a normal thing, and for your body to experience knee pain, shoulder pain, low back, mid back, or upper back pain, is totally fine. So once you learn to trust and, and understand that the body will have pain from the day you are born to the end of your day on this life here on earth, you're gonna experience pain and pain should be a tool rather than a fear mechanism. And that's the main thing I try to teach with my students here is that you'll never be able to get rid of pain 100%. 
percent. It'll always be something that you have to learn to manage. Now, if you're going through chronic pain, that is your body telling you that something that you're doing or have been doing or have not changed yet is causing some chronic symptoms that I highly suggest that you address. So that's it. That's my opinion on medication and whether we should be taking it when it comes to recovery when it comes to getting through chronic pain or acute pain. Again, it's all has to be measured on a scale of what works for you and what's helping you ultimately get to the end game, which is getting to the point where you have more control over your pain. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Again, this is William from fitnessforbackpain.com. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe. If you want more details on understanding pain, on training around a sensitive back, we have a private membership group that you can jump into. I always link it below in the comment section. If it's something that you think might be a fit for you, check it out. There's no contracts. You can jump in, check out all the content. There's tons and tons and hours and hours of content that walks you step by step through navigating what could be right now your chronic issue that may just be a thing of the past if all you can do is devote some good time, good energy, and good education towards your pain and navigating it the best way possible. Again, thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next week.